Let's get into some Saints salary cap stuff, as uh, we kind of been teasing all show. Now, look, I'm I, I'm going to say this off the bat. I'm going to rush through some of this because I don't know that it's all terribly interesting radio because what we're talking about is a lot of very dense information um, in terms of how the Saints make up for this 90 to $100 million overage that they currently have on the uh, expected salary cap going in to the 2021 season. So, okay, off the off the bat, Drew Brees retires, right? Now, according to Nick Underhill at New Orleans Love Football, the Saints need to wait until after June 1st to make this an official transaction that spreads his hit out over time. Um, uh, apparently, if the NFL allows this, he could also agree to a lower base salary, like league minimum, and then retire the bottom line, there are multiple ways to manipulate Drew's retirement if he does indeed do that, where you could have a cap savings of about $25 million. That's huge, right? So already off the bat, out of a $100 million chunk you're trying to make up, you got a quarter taken off with one player. That's big news. Uh, this is something that you're going to see a lot of. You could restructure Janoris Jenkins' salary, right, if you want to keep Jackrabbit around, which you do. Uh, Antonio Brown, even before he got hurt in that Tampa game, wasn't doing anything. Why? Because you had Jack Rabbit shutting him down. Him and Marshawn Lattimore on the edges are a really strong cornerback duo. Uh, so maybe you convert $9 million of Jenkins' base salary, um, like you always do, into a signing bonus. You add voidable years at the end. That spreads the money out into the future. It does tie you to Jenkins long-term, but like I said, I think you're okay with that. It saves about $8 million. Um, other guys that you would restructure. Same thing with Mike Thomas. Restructure that base salary, turn a signing bonus, prorate over the life of the contract, savings about $9 million. Same thing with Teron Armstead, save about $6 million. Same thing with Cam Jordan, save about 9 to $10 million. Um, and then, look, you do the same thing with Tamar Davis, same thing with David on Yamada. You could cut Nick Easton and just walk away. That'll save you $6 mil. You could cut Malcolm Brown, just walk away. That'll save you five mil. And then you can, uh, you're going to get creative because you want to keep Ryan Ramchick around, right? So the idea that Nick proposes is signing him to like a four-year, $95 million extension. That comes with a signing bonus uh, and a base salary where bottom line, if you get him to an extension, you can have a really low cap number this year and then obviously have that go up over time, that could save about uh, $7 million, potentially. So all you need to know, I know I just threw a lot of numbers at you. And look, Quan's, I, I'm not sure I can quite speak on the Quan Alexander contract. It's very confusing to me right now still. Um, he has like some sort of injury guarantee. Uh, Nick seems to think that, although it's very complicated, that you can get him to a point where he could account for $10 million in cap savings. So already with all of these moves that we just talked, right? Breeze retiring, restruction, Jenkins, Alexander, Mike Thomas, Teron Armstead, Cam Jordan, Ryan Ramchick, Demario Davis, David Onyemata, all very key players that you want to hold on to. If you're able to get everybody to agree to these restructures, that gets you from 100 million over the cap to about just 2 million over the cap. Okay, so already you're finding some great savings. And now what do you do? Uh, how do you approach, this is where I think the, the, the kind of tough decisions come in. How do you approach Andrews Pete? Because he, he stands to make a lot of money. He's got a big cap number. You could do what you did with Teron Armstead, everybody else that we just mentioned. You could, uh, spread that money out over time, extend it. But the problem with that is, I mean, I don't know, Danny, how do you feel about being tied to Andrews Pete long-term? I know, I know, I know that fans can be very on the fence about Pete. Yeah, definitely concerned about his injuries. I want to know if he can stay on the field or not. And when he is on the field, he doesn't always perform consistently. So, yeah, it's definitely a big risk. And, and, and right now, I mean, you're still basically locked in the deal through 2023. If you were to try to you know, do all the prorate and everything we just talked about, you'd be locked in even longer. So, Andrews Pete's going to be a key decision point. Um, you could just straight up cut Emmanuel Sanders. That would save $4 million in cap space. Emmanuel Sanders was good this year. I don't know if he had the impact quite that I thought that he would. You know, we had a lot of very high-minded sounding takes in the offseason about, well, you got to see, due to Drew Brees in this offense, that Emmanuel Sanders will actually be more impactful on the Saints than he will be anywhere else, and I don't know that that came true. Then again, he, I think he was one of the key players at times in bridging the gap without Brees, without Mike Thomas, so 
I think I'd be a bit hesitant to want to cut Emmanuel Sanders outright. Um, I don't know what Thomas Moore said is going to do. Does he lower his salary? Does he retire? Who knows? Um, that could potentially be another three and a half million off the books. And then depending on how you feel about Taysom Hill, if you cut him, it'll leave some money on the books, but you would save five overall. Like if, if, if you don't think that Taysom's really going to be that quarterback and he knows he wants to compete for that starting job, even though I don't think this seems very realistic at all, uh, just because I think it's Taysom and James probably competing for that job next year, you could walk away from him. And then here's something that almost has to happen. You must. Okay, so the same way we said that you must extend Ryan Ramchick and keep him around, you must extend Marshawn Lattimore. And you're basically going to do the same thing where you're going to make that cap number really low in the beginning and have it rise on the back end. So so this is kind of the strategy that we talked about earlier where if you want to keep this team intact and you want to move forward in the future with your key pieces in place and remain relevant even into next year, this is the way that you can make that happen. With all those moves we just talked about, as Nick said, that's about a $20 million surplus if you're doing everything we just said with 39 players under contract, right? So you still have a lot to do. Here's here's where the attrition is going to come in. Maybe, look, unless you decide to just full reset, then maybe you let some of those bigger guys leave or you trade them for value. Where the attrition is going to come in, here is the list of players whose deals are expiring. Marcus Williams, Craig Robertson, Jared Cook, Sheldon Rankins, P.J. Williams, Justin Hardy, uh, Jameis Winston, D.J. Swearinger, Dwayne Washington, James Hurst, Ty Montgomery, Michael Burton, Noah Spence, Ken Crawley, Benny Fowler, Alex Anzalone, Austin Carr, Trey Hendrickson, Jay Kumaro, Will Clapp, JT Gray. This is where the attrition is going to come in. This is where you're going to lose, guys. Now, obviously, you want to try to keep Marcus Williams, right? Uh, I don't know how you feel about Sheldon Rankins. Craig Roberts, it would be easy to kick. He's, he's a leader. He's a special teams guy. Um, I don't think too many Saints fans would be positive about bringing Jared Cook back. Right now, uh, just, Matt Musso just gave me a look based on the other day. I mean, the other big name in there, though, is Trey Hendrickson, right? Maybe the biggest name. It's him and Marcus Williams. So I don't know. I don't know who gets to stick around out of this and who has to go. But this is where the turnover is going to take place in that grouping that we just named. And that's where this team is going to start to look really different, right? And one of the reasons why you went 8-1 and one without your breeze the last couple of years was because you had this great Sanu that you're seeing right here, this, this kind of meat and bones. Uh, and, and, and you're going to lose some of that. And it'll be interesting to see if you can make up for that. Because it, it, like knowing all of this information, what it all boils down to is what should the Saints do? Because what this points out to me is that Mickey Loomis and Kai Harley, they can bend the cap to their will if they choose to do so. I just think that there's a couple of kind of sliders, a couple of sliding curves that start to remain clear, right? The more relevant you want to remain in the short term, the more debt you are going to accept to continue to push down the road, the more you will tie yourselves to players and contracts that maybe you're unsure about committing to, right? So the better you want to stay in the short term, the more you're going to kind of kick that can down the road and spread that debt out and continue to build that debt. Um, I think the level of quarterback you want to commit to will also have a higher impact on the rest of the roster, right? The higher, if you did want to get creative and go after a Matt Stafford or some of these quarterbacks that are going to come available, feasibly you could. Whoever the level of quality of quarterback that you're going to commit to is going to have a direct correlation with taking away from other parts of the roster. So like in the end, it, with knowing all of this information, I think it's my opinion I think you kind of go for the short-term success. You're eight and one without Breeze the last couple of years. As we just laid out, you can keep all the major players um, with some creative bookkeeping, if you will, but you can keep them around. And then you rely on Jameis or Taysom, one of those guys stepping up in the short term. And if you keep enough of the other pieces around, maybe you start to go quarterback in the draft. Maybe some interesting trade opportunities arise. Like I think you can figure out quarterback eventually. And, and, and maybe like the kind of Indianapolis Colts had to do, right? You lose Andrew Luck. They still had a really good team. They tried Brissett. It didn't work. They get Phillip Rivers. It did work. They're still trying to figure it out. I think the Saints will kind of enter that same cycle. Or if I was a Saints, or as a Saints fan, if I were the Saints, 
I think I like that plan because it keeps the fan base engaged. It keeps you relevant. It keeps you from falling off a cliff and kind of realizing all of your greatest fears in the post-Breeze era. So as we said to begin the show, though, a fascinating time for New Orleans Saints fans that you sit here at a crossroads, and I'm very intrigued to see what Mickey Loomis, Sean Payton, and the rest of that Saints power structure decides is best for their future. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, go ahead and like and subscribe below. You want more great Saints content? We got it all here on Off the Bench Overtime. Check out these other videos, share with your friends, and let's grow the Houdat Nation together. Houdat!